Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. What's up, guys? Uh, new Map Men video, J Foreman video. Of course, you're going to watch it. They're fantastic. Preemptive like. Uh, the link to the original video from J Foreman, if you haven't seen it yet or just want to watch it on your own, top of the description. Uh, Discord, all the other links below that. Uh, the Phantom Island of Google Maps. Cool. It's J Foreman. I'm ready. Today's episode is about things which appear to exist, but which don't. Welcome to... Map Men. I'm the men, and here's the map. Map man, map man, map map map. These guys are fantastic. Man. Many years ago, being an explorer was the best job in the world. The perks were obvious. Months at sea, far from loved ones, with a good chance you might starve to death. Fun. But these days, there's no such thing as an explorer. And what do you want to be when you grow up? An explorer! Well, you can't, because of Google Earth. Satellite oh. technology was the death of discovery, as new aerial images could be used to perfectly map every inch of terror. Hang on, what was that? What was what? Go back a bit. But it's just ocean. There, that black smudge. Huh. Something in the sea has been censored. Oh, my mistake. This is the pre-2012 Google map. In the up-to-date one, it's just empty ocean. Wait, that's an even bigger mystery. Plot it's thickens. time to do some research. I've just read a Wikipedia summary of this incredibly boring book, and it turns out this is the location of an island discovered by Captain Cook in 1774. Australia, man. Cook was sailing in the South Pacific doing what he did best, looking out for land either small enough to be a crash hazard or big enough to colonise. And he succeeded, successfully spotting a small and previously unknown sandy island. In a say-what-you-see naming tradition befitting a man associated with Australia, he named it Sandy Island. Sandy Island went on to appear on lots of maps right up... I've heard of this oh my god oh my god oh my god it's from that youtube video uh, you i really love watching this this channel on when i go to bed they're like scary s stories isle of sand not sandy island isn't that the same thing all right sorry uh, false alarm well oh, false alarm up until Sandy Island. Sandy Island went on to appear on lots of maps right up until 2012. But it oughtn't have, because it turns out Sandy Island has never and never has existed. Oh. Sandy Island is what's known as a phantom island, an island that's marked on maps and believed to be real, but which was never actually there. So if there was nothing there, why did Captain Cook think there was? And why did it stay on maps for so long? And how did this mistake go uncorrected for so many hundreds of years right into the age of satellites? The best way to answer that is by looking at lots of famous examples of phantom islands throughout history, each with their own explanations. And thankfully, I've made a list. So have I. I'll start. Reason number one. Sailors often got lost. The sea... Wait, but... How could a satellite... ...is big. Sorry. very few landmarks, so... Oh my god! Lost. Look at how big the freaking Pacific Ocean is. Just, that's really cool because, like, from an alien, per, or, like, from, like, you would just, uh, Earth would just look like a big blue ball from this direction. Sorry. Sea. I'm Reason number one. ADD. Often got lost. The sea is big, with very mm -hmm. few landmarks. So, back when they didn't have reliable navigation systems or fancy boats or fresh fruit, you can understand how on a cloudy and very stormy night, it wasn't easy to find your way to Kenya. Because it was so hard to know exactly where you were, sailors often found land where they weren't expecting it. A great example of this is Pepe's Island. Peeps Island. If it doesn't exist, I can pronounce it how I want. In 1683, Admiral William Cowley, on a ship called the Bachelor's Delight, was just off the coast of South America when he, inverted commas, discovered, inverted commas, so-called Peeps Island. Astrophy? Cowley was delighted with the find and wrote at length about his great discovery. The island has a pleasant aspect. There were a large number of birds. We killed as many as we needed for food. They were quite tasty. Peeps Island appeared on 110 maps over the following century, despite no one but Cowley ever catching a glimpse of it. Many sailors tried to find Peeps Island, including Captain Cook, but no one ever managed it. In the 19th century, historians looked at Cowley's extensive descriptions and sketches of Peeps Island and noticed that they had a striking similarity with the Falklands, 280 miles further south. Cowley had been in the Falklands. Part of me really wants to read this. I'm not going to.
Okay. Did they read all, did they write all this stuff? I wonder if we haven't actually got ourselves in rather a bit of trouble for the way we departed, actually. It was His Majesty King Charles II himself who asked us to do this voyage and made a really big deal about it. They wrote all of this? Historians look to... Robin's his birthday today. The rest of the crew have suggested that we treat him to small celebration. Not sure this is a good idea. I'm all for boosting morale, but this is a serious voyage after all. And any lapse into frivolity could jeopardize the integrity of the mission. Have decided that the best course of action is to allow a birthday acknowledgement with strict rules for keeping the, the frivolity muted. The crew may bake Robinson a birthday cake, but it must not be allowed to rise in the oven. <laughs> Any birthday cards issued must be entirely blank, both inside and out. <laughs> Some small print on the back for copyright details is permissible. They, d I want to read this whole thing. Hold on. No, I'm not going to. My drawing complete. I curled myself up into a tiny ball and rolled back down the hill to meet the others. Then I remembered I'd forgotten to take my drawing down with me, so rather than unravel myself unnecessarily, I ordered Smith and Robinson to roll me back up to the top again so I could retrieve it. A bumpy but uncomfortable ride. After a picnic of two penguins, each for lunch, we headed to the nearest town. Okay. The Falklands, 280 miles further south. Cowley had been in the Falkland Islands all oh, oh, sorry, Cowley, including Captain Cook, but no one ever managed it. In the 19th century, historians looked at Cowley's extensive descriptions and sketches of Peeps Island and noticed that they had a striking similarity with the Falklands, 280 miles further south. Cowley had been in the Falkland Islands all along, and Peeps was finally pooped. Reason number two. Ah, uh, my turn. Reason number two. A trick of the light. Not all Phantom Islands are a result of navigational error. Even when sailors knew exactly where they were, they might not have known exactly what they were looking at. In 1821, Captain William Elliot spotted an island with high mountainous land between Australia and South America. He named it Emerald Island. So, if there was nothing there, then what not on earth was he looking at? And because he was in such a Arctica. cold part of the world, Elliot had likely fallen victim to a special kind of mirage. Normally, things like this pack of sea ice, which are straight ahead, appear to be straight ahead. But when a temperature inversion occurs, with cold air on top of hot air, a duct can form which distorts the light's path, meaning this pack of sea ice now appears to be high and mountainous land. Like the squiggly? Which is precisely what Elliot said he saw. These mirages are known as Fata Morganas, and as these terrible terrifying pictures of floating boats prove could be very convincing. Non-existent Emerald Island featured boldly on maps for almost a hundred- That's fake. I understand he just explained to me the reasoning and I'm now calling it fake after he just told me. But prove what? could be very- No, no, I don't believe that. Actually. Well, no. Well, where's the horizon? No. No, you're tricking me. Convincing. Non-existent Emerald Island featured boldly on maps for almost 100 years, partly because nobody could be bothered to sail all the way back here just to check. Reason number three. The thing discovered is real, is really rare, and is land that isn't an island. One example of... Oh, we have to take this. Sorry. This just in. A local boy has reportedly taken home a rare golden goose after climbing a beanstalk and overcoming an evil man-eating giant. Breaking news. An unsuspecting goose farmer has had his golden egg-laying bird his stolen head. by a tiny man accused of breaking and entering. She hadn't expected to see him come home with the biggest jackpot in make-believe history. Putting hard-working giants out of business. Clear sign of magic as a force for good. Witchcraft being used by criminals. Do you ever get the feeling it's hard to know whom to trust when you're consuming news? Fucking hell. What? Fant I love their, their ads. Their sponsored things. Sponsored this an ad. Bra uh, brown... Uh, news by... Yes, and that's why more and more people are using ground news. Ground news. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, Putting hard-working giants out of business. 
clear sign of magic as a force for good. Witchcraft being used by criminals. Such, so you good. Do get the feeling it's they hard so good. to trust when you're consuming news? Yes, and that's why more and more people are using Ground News, an app and website that lets you compare related news articles from across the world. Who are you? With many media companies serving up algorithm-based news for clicks instead of reporting facts, Ground News helps you understand what's really going on. What is going on? For every story, you can see how different publications cover it, with info on their political leaning, ownership and reliability, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. Can you give me an example? Yes, I can. This story about world clocks changing has 164 articles published on it, with headlines ranging from Earth is spinning faster to climate change is slowing the Earth's rotation. And this handy feature has a map showing where in the world it is or isn't being covered. These articles come from the UK, and these ones come from all over the rest of Europe, where you might not have spotted them. Are you saying I should click on this QR code or go to ground.news slash mapmen to sign up for less than a pound a month or get 40% off the Vantage subscription, which is even better value. Yes. Guys, please make sure if this interests you, this this honestly really cool thing, but if this interests you and you learned it here, please for watching their video. This is their content. Make sure to use their, their codes, the slash mapmen. It makes Ground News know you were sent from them. It's only right, so please use that stuff if this interests you. Yes, in a world where news spreads faster than it can be verified, we could all benefit from a product like Ground News. Thank you. Well, that's all from us this lunchtime. Thanks again to our sponsor, Ground News. And now it's time for the news in your area. They're, they're wait, wait, so wait, wait. great. Ah, yes, things that weren't islands. The name California historically refers to a long stretch of the west coast of North America, only the top half of which ended up as part of the USA. The bottom half, or Baja California, is this long peninsula dangling off Mexico. When the early Spanish explorers landed here in the 1600s, the extraordinary longness of what we now know as the Gulf of they California thought it was an island. meant that they never made it all the way up to the connecty bit up the top, and made the understandable assumption that California was an island. The island of California appeared on many of the first maps of the newly discovered continent, and this this now famous map mistake went on to appear on thousands of maps right up until the end of the 18th century. Did it really take them that long to figure out it wasn't an island? No. The island had been <laughs> disproven several times by several explorers, but the mistake persisted on maps for so many years because people wanted it to exist. The explorers named the fictional island of California after the even more fictional island of California from a popular 16th century romantic novel about an island populated entirely by Amazonian women. In an era where European high society were using maps for decoration, rather than navigating. Amazonian women. <laughs> in an era where European high society were using maps for decoration rather than navigation, it made artistic, if not geographic, sense to include the famous island that well-read people wanted to see. Ancient myths have been the source of a surprisingly large number of multiplied map mistruths, which brings us to the fourth reason for Phantom Islands. Map makers are lazy. <laughs> Our favourite completely fictional island that clumsily sleepwalked its way onto factual maps is this Atlantis. mythical one, supposedly found off the Atlantic, off the west coast of Ireland, called Brazil. What? Not to be confused with Brazil, which is also found in the Atlantic off the west coast of Ireland. The two are in no way related, and the sameness of their names is a complete coincidence. Brazil, as it's probably pronounced, is an enchanted island from Irish folklore, which, as legend has it, is forever cloaked in mist, but can be seen for just one day every seven years, like... Skull Island! That ITV documentary about those children who turned into adults. It first turned up on this what? Portolan chart of 1325, when inaccuracies were a reasonably expected hazard of cartography, and distinguishing myth from reality was a low priority. Once Brazil, not that one, made the jump from fairy tale to map, it was only a matter of time before another map maker got the wrong end of the stick and stuck it on their map because they were too lazy to do their own research. And that's exactly what happened in 1375, when Brazil, not that one, turned up on the Catalan Atlas, and now that it was on two maps, that was as good as a fact for all future cartographers, and it only snowballed from there. Getting lost, trick of the light, lack of context, and laziness are just four ways that islands can be wrongly discovered. But this one is so close to one of the places that I'm sure, that I know was very into exploring and stuff. How did this last? I... It goes without saying that there are dozens more, including icebergs, pumice rafts, dense fog, and dehydrated hallucinations. So it's no wonder that through dozens of mistakes on hundreds of maps, the world was littered with phantom islands. 
These days, Phantom Islands are merely amusing map anomalies, but not so long ago, for some sailors, Phantom Islands were a very serious nuisance. In 1909, Ernest Shackleton and his crew were on board the HMS Nimrod, making their way home after a failed attempt to reach the South Pole. Ooh, sorry, lads. Looking at his map, Shackleton plans some much-needed rest stops between Sydney and South America. Unfortunately, the first of these was Royal Island, which turned out to be a Phantom Island. Luckily, they had Emerald Island to look forward to next. But, also... as discussed five minutes and 49 seconds ago, Emerald Island mm. turned out to be another Phantom Island. Undaunted, the exhausted crew continued on to Nimrod Island, which turned out to be another Phantom Island, leaving only Doherty Island remaining, which turned out to be another Phantom Island, making this the greatest voyage of undiscovery in the history of exploration. Yay! Thankfully, for anyone trying to sail from Sydney to <laughs> South America, the hesitant yay. yay. Thankfully, for anyone trying to sail from Sydney to South America nowadays, almost every Phantom Island ended up being undiscovered by the mid 20th century. But how did Sandy Island manage to keep appearing on Google Maps as late as 2012? Oh yeah, I was going to tell you, sorry. Um, it was down to the French. Sandy Island, if it did exist, would belong to and be the mapping responsibility of France, as it's in the region of French New Caledonia. Its existence had been in doubt since the early 1900s. They do it for water rights? So in 1974, a French flying reconnaissance mission went to check their island out and, to their not surprise, certified that there was nothing there. Which, incidentally, is the second time we've discussed France getting smaller as a result of a proper survey. Having undiscovered their own territory, the French pulled out all the stops to tell everybody that there is less France in the world. Fast forward to the 21st century, when Google created their digital maps with Satellite View. Satellite View is not created, as you might expect, by taking lots of photos, stitching them together and adding the map detail on top. It's far quicker, easier and more accurate to do it the other way around. The pre-2012 edition used map data from the US National Imagery and Mapping Agency. Data which had been digitized based on old maps that predated the French undiscovery. So the satellites found sea, but their maps showed that there should be land. And that's why they added a big black smudge, meaning error. Because most people use satellite view just to look at their own house, and this was a part of the world where the fish don't even have dial-up, this smudge went largely unnoticed. Until 2012, when a curious Australian research ship decided to take a detour to check out the discrepancy once and for all. And when they got there on the 26th of November, they announced to the world... No, 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 So even in the world of digital satellite maps, there are still parts of the world that remain mysterious and I could still grow up to be an explorer? No, because you haven't got a boat. Mm. <laughs> it's all too easy to mock explorers who made silly mistakes, but before we let you go, consider this. Discovering land was their job. They were paid to do it and paid more the more they did it. So even if Cook was in doubt about what he saw, hmm, could be driftwood. He was incentivized to claim it was land for king and country. Have you seen something, sir? Uh, uh yes, land. <gasps> Mark that down as land. Today, in 2024, the is it also because, like, just like in case there's a 0.001% chance it is land, it's better to claim you've seen it so that in case any of the other exploring nations saw it and it did exist, you could be like, well, I already saw that. So I guess better you claim it is something then have the possibility that it maybe is something. Do you, you know what I'm saying, right? World map down has land. Today, in 2024, the world map is completely perfect. And we're certain that nothing will be discovered or undiscovered ever again, ever, ever. <laughs> Brazil is not real. <laughs> it's all fake. Discovered ever again, ever, ever. Ah. Soothing sound. It's great as always. Love y'all. Hope you guys are all doing well. Would appreciate any comments down below. You guys are always so great with that. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys next video. Bye. We'd love for you to like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.